As someone who has spent decades researching mRNA, what has it been like for you to witness people's hesitation around COVID vaccines? Well, I mean, it's been frustrating, of course, because I wish that the entire world could see how much dedication and effort the people inside of Moderna uh, worked day and night to both um, make sure that we were doing all the uh, foundational research, but then the manufacturing and all the quality controls and really dotting every I and crossing every T. Uh, and we, frankly, we busted our butts to get this thing out and to then have people be afraid to take it is very frustrating. What we're trying to correct now is to really educate people that this uh, new way of making medicines, mRNA, is not you know, something foreign. mRNA is a crucial component of all living organisms, including humans. It's truly not that new at all. It's not new at all. Yeah. And we've just figured out how to be able to access it and then utilize it to make medicines. You said something really beautiful during your TED talk along the lines of mRNA just gives our bodies instructions to kind of heal itself. That's right. And I thought that was a really simple and beautiful way to kind of break down the science that a lot of people get tripped up on. It really came home to me when I was uh, in graduate school and then as a postdoc at MIT and I was working in the Center for Cancer Research, but I wasn't working on a particular cancer. And my mother just really you know, kept pressing me, what cancer are you going to cure? And I said to her, you know, you can't cure cancer. You can't go and fix your car unless you know how your car works, right? And we weren't put here with an instruction manual. Mm -hmm. And so somebody's got to write that, uh, got to figure out how all the parts work and how they're supposed to work normally so that then we can figure out what's wrong and how to fix it when it's wrong. And so, frankly, having to explain to my mother that the research I was doing which was curiosity-based research, was valuable, um, made me really think about how to communicate to a non-scientist uh, and, and frankly, somebody who was quite opinionated um, about the value of uh, research and, and how to get them to understand uh, that. And so that has really helped me as a communicator. And that's what I, you know, really I'm very passionate about is communicating science in a way that whoever, whatever the audience is that I'm talking to can appreciate and understand. Looking to the future, there appears to be so much hope for what mRNA research can do for some of the most troublesome parts of our healthcare system. What can everyday people do to kind of support um, this upcoming research, this upcoming um, possibility? So, um, mRNA medicines are actually just one of a coming wave of what I call nucleic acid medicines, what other people have started to dub as programmable medicines. When I talked about the fact that we, once we had decided what protein your body needed to be told to make to protect yourself against SARS-CoV-2, it only took us an hour to actually create the messenger RNA. That's a programmable medicine, right? And so. There are many other such medicines based on the science of nucleic acids, both RNA and DNA. And I think it's really important that folks both educate themselves on the simple biology uh, and understand that DNA and RNA and proteins are really what make us human. And they're also the foods that we eat. So we're constantly surrounded by them and consuming them. And so they're not something to be afraid of. And so educating themselves and then uh, educating their friends and, and family and trying to dispel myths uh, or, uh, you know, uh, misinformation, that's the only way it's going to get done.